Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Unity of Salem. So glad to see you. Good morning. Uh, welcome to all of you on live stream. And uh, welcome to those who will uh, watch the service later online. We just join our hearts together. I invite you to stand as you're able and join us in all that I see. light comes forward, I invite you to sing with us, I am a light.
good morning. My name is Joshua, and I am your platform assistant today. If you notice, I'm coming up here a little out of order in this time of renewal and coming back after COVID. Uh, we're taking this opportunity along with the new paint colors to change up a few little things and to help revitalize the energy and become a better version of ourselves. So let us know what you think. We welcome you to Unity of Salem today in the same warm and loving spirit with, with, with which Jesus greeted his friends. We greet you knowing that no one is here by accident or coincidence. We are each an essential part of the energy that is Unity of Salem. Right where you are along your life path or your spiritual journey, you are welcome here. And I'm Reverend Patty. It's my honor to join with you in prayer. Shall we pray now? Hmm, sweet, sweet spirit. We welcome this glorious day. We welcome the joy of this moment. We welcome each other with open hearts and open minds. We are truly honored to be in the presence, to be the presence, to be one in spirit. Beyond any sense of time or space, we know right here and right now the presence and power of God, and we give thanks for this and so much more in our lives. Thank you, thank you, thank you, God. Amen. I now have a few announcements to share with you. We've kicked off our back to school drive. You can drop off supplies here in the sanctuary through the end of August or drop them by the office. Uh, yeah. uh, the Boys and Girls Club let us know that during COVID last year, we were one of their largest donation sites. Let's do it again this year. Have you heard? We're having a yard sale. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Kay DeRochi. Kay, is she here? Oh, there. Kay uh, is doing an awesome job coordinating it and has a few words for us this morning. Come on. Okay. Well, thank you. <laughs> and I uh, loved our opening song today. It was absolutely what I needed to hear for the yard sale. <laughs> OK, so I have a really important announcement about the yard sale. And that is we do not have enough volunteers for this coming week in order to actually have the sale. So we have an opportunity. Um, I'll start with Saturday. Saturday morning, uh, between 7 a.m. and 8.30, we will be carrying uh, tables with donations on them and boxes out to place them under the awning. We need eight to 10 people who can lift to do that. We have two people signed up. So we need six to eight more people. If you're able to lift, you folks in the sanctuary or you folks uh, attending the service online, if you're able to lift or you have a neighbor or relative or friend who can help out, please sign up as soon as possible so we know what we can do. Um, and then there's uh, also opportunities for lighter work um, throughout the day on Saturday just to be at the sale, a smiling face, answer questions, um, keep an eye on the furniture area, that kind of thing. So there's that opportunity. And then Thursday is our other big uh, certain price day. We had one Saturday, got a lot done. We are rich with donations, and I know more are coming in. Um, so we need uh, at least six people um, all th at each hour all throughout the day from, uh, I think it's 9 in the morning until 5.30. And then again on Friday from 2 in the afternoon to about 7. Um, so, and that doesn't require lifting necessarily. And some of the work can be done seated. Um, and then, oh, and then we need some help setting up cashier tents to, so that our cashiers don't roast like they did last time. Um, and that will happen Friday. 
So uh, let's see, where do you sign up? Um, information table. Uh, you can do it online by clicking on the link in the, any of the recent uh, weekly emails that many of you receive. Also, um, you can go to uh, Facebook, uh, Unit of Salem's community uh, page, and click on the volunteer link there. You can talk to the office. You can talk to me. Um, and then lastly, if this isn't yours to do, then please hold the vision for us that we will have a successful, lighthearted, and fun-filled event. And last, I said the last was last, but this is really last, is safety. We will, as volunteers, be wearing masks both during the preparation time and at the sale. Thank you. And now Angela has something to share with you following last week's CD release party. Excellent. Thank you so much for all your encouragement and your support and uh, coming to have fun for the CD release party. Thanks so much. Thank you also for your generosity uh, with money that came in from that event. We now have symbols, uh, the two different types for our percussion set. And um, also we've ordered chimes, which will should be here by next Sunday. So really excited about that. And just, um, you know, may us continue to add, <laughs> add beauty to our sacred time together. So thank you. Last announcement, we would like. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> uh, last announcement, today's beautiful flowers come from Trish, Trish Harper's yard. Thank you, Trish. Let's join together now and sing for the beauty of the earth. And you may stay seated as we uh, join our hearts together in this song that has been uh, sung for years and years with fellow uh, spiritual travelers. And I just invite you to join your heart in gratitude for all the beauty of creation.
We now join together in affirming Unity of Salem's mission statement. Unity of Salem nurtures spiritual growth and inclusive, loving community. And our vision statement. Centered in spirit, we create a world of unlimited peace, love, and joy. And our core values, inclusiveness, spirit-led, compassion, love, joy, and integrity. I now invite Clay up for the, our reading for today. Good morning. Good morning. Come here, you. Yeah. The word for today is harmony. Turning hostility into hospitality or resentment into acceptance is a matter of choice. And it is my choice to live in spiritual harmony with others. So instead of thinking about what may be wrong with others and in my relationships with them, I focus on what seems right. And something powerful emerges from this observation. Little annoyances fade to nothingness, and reverence for sacredness of all people increases. When I am willing to accept others as God's own creations of life and love, a shift occurs in me. And often the change in my attitude draws a like response from those people. An expression of love and acceptance was all that was needed to bridge the gap of misunderstanding and forge a connection of harmony and goodwill. And from Romans 12, 16, live in harmony with one another. Thank you. Yes, 
Actually, one of my favorite songs, the, that energy of give yourself to love. Thank you. Well, we started last week on a, a new series through this book by Mark Nepo called More Together Than Alone. And what this series really is about is looking at that power of spiritual community and exploring the stories um, of spiritual community, those stories that tie us all together and that reside in our collective and individual consciousness, demonstrating the, the path that we move forward from that energy of, of I or me consciousness and step into that energy of we consciousness that we talked about last week, you know, that energy of one God, one humanity, one planet, many stories. Now we are, are each, um, I've, I've mentioned many times here one of my favorite quotes from an Ira Prokoff workshop you know, on journaling. And we were studying some of his work in a class I had in ministerial school. And a woman in his workshop wrote a poem for him. And in the line, it talked about this, this individual journey that we cannot do alone. We do this together. We're truly in this together. And today's collection of stories in this book, or, or what Mark likes to call collection, uh, a, a meditation, each section is a meditation on a theme, and that meditation is done through stories. This section is called Islands in Time. And I struggled with understanding, what does that mean? What is an island in time? And and I found some real insight in Mark's introduction to this section, so I want to share that with you. While it's impossible to portray the entire history or impact of community, I can bear witness to the inspiring and demanding moments of giving, of giving building, and heart. My hope is to lift these emblematic moments, these stories, up to the light as you would a prism. And in an attempt to disclose the many colors at work when we live together. Then he goes on to say this. The word home, spelled H-O-L-M, but pronounced actually home. The word home means a small island in the middle of a river or stream. And I went, oh, those places of home. These moments of giving, building, and heart. These moments of community in the river of time. These moments of home. These moments of knowing. Welcome home. You know, to that energy of the heart. And then he goes on to share in this meditation these stories that demonstrate how throughout time we have learned together. That we have grown Together, how we spiritually evolve when we do this together. You know, giving examples of beloved community. Giving examples of our spiritual home. So let's talk about this idea of story. Why does he share this through story? Why does he use stories? And I think it's because stories are what tie us together. Or as Christina Baldwin says in her opening to the book, Story Catcher, we make our lives bigger or smaller, more expansive or more limited, according to the interpretation of life that is our story. And I, I would say that it's, it is what connects us. It's also what comes between us. 
which is a form of connection, whether we realize it or not. The story we tell in our own head, the stories we tell each other, the stories we tell in our history books, the stories we teach to our children, the myths that we hold sacred, all of that is what allows us to share our connection, our evolution. It allows us to be connected through time, through space. It allows us to be one with each other. Mark does a great job of, of gathering all of these stories, um, some of which, most of which I either never learned or had forgotten. He really reaches out to some through cross cultures and picks up some really amazing stories. And he gives them a place. He gives them a sense of place. He opens his heart and he shows us how to, to open our heart and see each story as a prism of light that is shining as an island in time. And there's one important manner in which he does this, and he talks about it, and he calls it hospitality. What are we, what do we have a hospitable consciousness towards? What are we welcoming towards? You know, I, I really began reading this chapter to question how hospitable is my consciousness? This, which I would call this individual island, how hospitable is this individual island in time? How hospitable is my mind? Who do I put outside of my circle? Um, sometimes even on a regular basis without realizing it. Mark quotes Henry Nguyen as saying, we live in a desert with many lonely travelers who are looking for a moment of peace, for a fresh drink, for a sign of encouragement so that they can continue their mysterious search for freedom. Hospitality is the ability to pay attention to this guest. In reading this, I became aware of the, you know, I had this realization that I had a little bit of what, what I have referred to, and you'll understand this, Angela, as Minnesota nice going on in my consciousness. Now, I'm not to disparage any of my friends in Minnesota. They will also understand what I mean. There's a, an energy of um, maybe coming from the Scandinavian heritage, who knows what, but I, I experienced it there in ways that I have experienced elsewhere, but, but they have become aware of it and are working on it. And it's a type of hospitality that is, quite frankly, about appearances. It's not necessarily about a welcoming into our circle. It's about how do I show up? Do I look welcoming? I don't necessarily want to open the circle. But I kind of want to be friendly. But let's do it like maybe from a little bit of a distance. You know, I don't really necessarily need to, to pull you in or maybe expand. Um, because that is outside my comfort zone. That is not the, um, I, I, kind, I, I kind of referred to it as a, a prideful friendliness. Having pride in the idea that you're friendly yeah, I see lots of smiles, even behind masks. I can, can feel that energy in your eyes. We kind of get it. Because we all have a version of that story at some time in our lives. And, and what that is is creating separation. What that is is seeing someone as other, as othering each other. Because we are different, and we have, to have, we have to be able to differentiate or separate or stand off instead of being in full acceptance. Full acceptance of someone that, um, that maybe you have consciously or unconsciously put outside of your circle. What if we were hospitable towards each other? Which Mark says is um, being affirmative, affirming the truth of each other, affirming that we are each a presence of the divine, at truly seeing beyond any appearances and knowing however you show up, it's God showing up, God working through you. We're each expressions of the divine. It's our innate nature. What if we honored that with everyone that we met? What if we said, namaste, 
I behold the Christ in you. Seeing the, seeing the newcomers, not as guests, but as newcomers to the story, as a central part of the story, because they are now in the story, because they're here, they're part of the experience, they're part of the journal and, and in the journey, and in fact, they have a vital part to play in the story. Affirming the value of each individual. And that's when we get to experience true community or what um, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. called beloved community. When our thoughts and our actions affirm each other. When we are accepting of each other and knowing that our one common denominator is that we share this spiritual journey together. One God, one humanity, one planet, many stories. So often, it seems that um, instead, we tend to dehumanize. We see them as other, as someone other than, because they were born um, in a different culture. They have a different race. They have a different lifestyle. They have a different belief system. They have a different political whatever. They're, they're of a different age. So many things that we see that separate us. What if we were looking for what connects us? What if we were looking for creating community, of being inclusive. It is one of our core values. Building community, inclusivity, inclusiveness. It is our true nature. And yet we've turned our backs on ourselves so often. You know, I was at the, I, I really didn't get how deeply this is ingrained in us. I was at the Northwest Regional Conference a few years ago, and Rabbi Ted Falcon asked a few questions. Um, questions like, sitting by yourself on a bus or in a waiting room or in your sanctuary, and a group of young men walk in. Maybe they're all dark-skinned. Maybe they're wearing jeans that are down to their knees. What's your first thought? What goes through your head? Or driving past someone sitting on the corner with a sign out, asking for food, and he or she is wearing Nikes or has their Vimo account posted on their um, cardboard sign. That's what happened to me last week down the street here. And uh, I saw the thoughts go through my head. What goes through your head? Isn't Quite frequently, it's a thought that others, someone else, that puts them outside of your circle. I've really had to question myself these past few weeks as we've um, dealt with this homeless situation in Salem by not dealing with it and moving people out so that we now have um, quite a few people in the neighborhood who are acting out in response to what is happening. And I've got to watch myself and my response to that. And it has me asking myself on a regular basis, are my thoughts, are the stories that I'm telling welcoming? Are they affirmative? Are they about putting someone outside or bringing someone inside my circle, outside or inside of my heart? Um, or am I making every thought about aligning with what Mark Nepo calls affirmative hospitality? That harmonious energy, that love that brings us all together. Um, am I living in peaceful coexistence? Or as uh, Mother Teresa would said, if I'm not in that peaceful energy, it's because I've forgotten that we all belong to each other. And one of the reasons story is vital is that it, it connects us and we don't forget that we are one family because we can identify with the story. We identify with each other. You know, I don't know what it means to walk in your shoes. You don't know what it means to walk in my shoes. And yet, through story, which we can only know if we're telling it to each other, not, you know, I can't know your story. I can't write your story. What's going on in my head is not what's going on for you. That's my story. Only you can share your story. And we forget the importance of asking, the importance of listening. Um, 
I remember how important it was for Joan to share her stories of her trip to India, for Ed to share his stories of his trip to South America, how much it connected us on our journeys, for Joanne to get up here and share her comedy, her stories, for our talent show, for us to connect with each other and share some aspect of our lives, it brought us together. It expanded that circle and expanded that heart energy into understanding more of what it means to be beloved community, to be one within, with each other with many stories. I was shocked by one of the examples that Mark Nepo uses in this book to demonstrate of how easily we can forget this, how easily we can get um, the importance of listening and, and seeing from the perspective of someone else's stories. Do you know what wampum is? I thought I knew what it was. I thought it was uh, Native American currency. Is that maybe what your definition is? It's not. That was the European trader's version of trying to understand or trying not to understand um, a Native American sacred symbol. Um, Wampum belts were used as a sacred tool. They were a sacred tool, and they were used for telling, um, for that spiritual practice of telling story. Mark Nepo describes it in this way, and it's, it's how they, Native Americans kept their oral tradition alive. He says, the string of sacred wampum was often held by a speaker to verify that he was speaking the truth. This tradition of speaking the truth involves certain rules of engagement when listening to each other. To begin with, each must accept the other as they are, putting aside assumptions and expectations. Each must, must accept the other as equal, and each must be honest, clear, and forthright. And when the Europeans arrived, they mistook wampum as a simple currency and never inquired into its sacred nature. Without knowledge of our stories, the sanctity is lost and the sacred is reduced to mere currency. This happens every time I objectify you without taking the time to inquire into the personal history and meaning of what passes through our hands. I cry. How sad. And yet how grateful I am that we can reconnect with the true stories. That we can affirm our true nature and we can begin to expand our capacity to accept each other. To, as I said last week, create authentic community, which includes focusing on helping each other shine our own light in our everyday life and learning to play together in a way that brings out a higher expression of the light, a higher expression of the truth of who we are. You know, Mark calls this spiritual hospitality. He says spiritual hospitality is when we support each other in crossing a threshold, whatever that threshold might be. And we don't get to define your threshold. You don't get to define my threshold. But we support each other in those choices that we make through the divine wisdom that was, is within each and every one of us. Because we can't know any better for anyone else. We can only know for ourselves, and we can only affirm that there is an innate wisdom guiding each and every one of us on this journey. We can stop imposing our stories on each other. As Mark says, spiritual hospitality demands that we do not guide, steer, or keep others from the threshold that is theirs to cross. And he uses um, as a model the idea of hospice that that is an energy of spiritual hospitality. And I completely agree with him that our concept of hospice is a great demonstration of walking this journey of love, of walking this journey of, of helping others with love across a threshold that can be very difficult to walk. And yet I also think it's very important to realize that we do this all the time every day. That's what our welcoming statement is about. It's about 
supporting someone walking through the threshold of this door. Someone walking into a new experience. Ourselves included each and every time we walk through this threshold, walking into this sanctuary, this sacred space, and letting each of us know that exactly who we are, exactly where we are, whatever's going on with us, we're welcome here. That has such amazing power to draw each of us into the circle of beloved community. Nothing is required of you. We see you as a unique expression of God, a unique expression of the divine, and you are valued and valuable just as you are. You know, so often we think we're being welcoming, and yet what we're really doing is looking for those we know. And without realizing it, turning our back on those um, who maybe need that affirmative hospitality, who maybe need someone to help them remember the truth of who they are, that are calling out for affirmation. Yes, our friends are too. What if we expanded that to a both and? You know, we're called to see every person who walks through this door, every person who walks into our life is more than an honored guest. They are newcomers to the story. They are part of the story. They are part of the circle. They're part of this island in time. We're telling the story. You know, and part of the story that we're writing together here is the story of beloved community. You know, Martin Luther King spoke so eloquently of what beloved community is about, and it is what he lived for. Community in which everyone is cared for. It's what he taught that, that, that we are here for each other. That's why we have an abundance corner. Did you know we have an abundance corner? Many of us contribute to this space. It's over in the bookstore. And, and it's a space where we bring supplies from our own lives, supplies that support us on this physical human journey to support each other when maybe we're in a situation where we don't have access to those supplies. So we're here for each other in a very tangible way. It's why we do things like have back to school drives. We're here for each other outside of this building in a very tangible way. You can't have that, you don't, you're not here on Sunday and don't have access to the abundance corner, call the office. We can let you in. The door is not closed. It can be open. Well, it is closed, but it's not like. <laughs> That kind of metaphor didn't work exactly. <laughs> but you understand what I'm saying. It's you are welcome. You are welcome. We're not, we have no intention of hoarding it. And in fact, if something's been there for a period of time, it goes on to the Miriam Polk food share. We want to continue and keep this cycle of giving and supporting each other, of sharing our sacred wampum, of sharing our stories. We want to keep it going. And, and in fact, we are thinking about maybe finding a way to share our stories even more on Sunday morning so that, that we can connect with each other. We can maybe have our own wampum belt, um, whatever, however we end up wanting to do that. Sharing our story in a way that is honest and clear and connecting, that affirms each and every one of us, allows us to know and honor and celebrate each of us. We, we invite your response to the welcome statement, to the changes that we're making, because this is truly what it's about, is finding ways to even more fully embrace welcoming energy and embracing each other in community. And we invite you to become a part of our welcome team. You could officially become a part of the team. Clay would love to have you as a greeter. He would love to put you on the team. And yet we're all part of that team. We are all part of the welcoming energy. And maybe standing at the door and greeting someone and being hospitable in that fashion is not yours to do, but making coffee is, or working the land so that the grounds are welcoming. There are many ways for us to be a hospitable community. The most important thing is that we all have the energy of boldly opening our doors wide 
and accepting each other and loving each other without reservation, without putting anyone outside of our hearts, without putting anyone outside of our circles, because we behold the Christ within ourselves and each other. Every moment is an island in time. Every moment is a vital part of the story that we are telling. And our story says, welcome home. This is your island. This is your story. And you belong here. Namaste. 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 We're going to take that energy into a time of meditation, a time of welcoming home. So I invite you, if you're comfortable, to close your eyes as Angela comes up and joins me on the platform. And as you close your eyes to focus your energy on your breathing, take a deep breath. Allow that music to move through you. And as you exhale, let go. Continuing this focus on your breathing. Allow the breath to guide you even deeper to that place beyond the thoughts, behind the feelings. That place deep within your heart. That place of peace, of sanctuary. That place where you can experience beingness itself. Where we can know oneness. And in this sacred place, I invite you to allow these words to be the words of your heart. I am a radiating center of divine love, mighty to attract my good and to radiate good to all of those around me. I am aware of God's abundant love flowing in and through my entire being, through every aspect of my life. My mind is open, free, and joyous as I affirm my unity with the one source. My unity with all of creation. All that is, has been, or ever will be. I breathe it in and I breathe it out. And know this truth in silent prayer. And as we bring our conscious awareness back to this body, to this circle, we are re-energized, revitalized, and renewed. We come to a close of this sacred time, affirming God's love radiating in all directions, creating positive change, uplifting this planet, and we are truly grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you, God. Amen. So here's one of those opportunities where we're going to do stuff just a little bit differently. Um, we're going to invite the prayer box to come up at this time. And in this energy of prayer that we have stepped into, I invite you to include using the power of your imagination in this prayer box, the names of those that you might be holding in your heart. 
those who might seem to be experiencing something less than oneness, something less than God. We add all of that energy to the prayers that are already in this box. And we fill this box with love and light, knowing divine wisdom already at work in each of the lives of those who are represented. We see beyond any chaos, beyond any doubt, and stand in the truth that God is already there, for there is nowhere that God is not. And we behold the Christ. We see health and wholeness, peace, prosperity, abundant blessings pouring forth to meet each and every need, and we give thanks. Thank you, thank you, thank you, God. Amen. Thank you, Linda. And now is the time in our service where we invite each of us to share of our personal abundance to support the work of this ministry. So I invite you to not only hold the, you know, the financial abundance of your life and in the life of this community, but the abundance of service, the abundance of joy, the abundance of love. Hold all of that energy in the palm of your hands as we bless our tithes, our offering, our gifts, using our offertory blessing together. Divine love flowing in, through, and as me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God. Amen. I invite our ushers to come forward and receive the offering. Thank you. I was supposed to say something. Ah, we are learning together. We know that it, this COVID, time of COVID is a challenge. So as the offering comes around, we invite you to let the ushers be the one who holds the gift, the baskets, who, and you can bless them. We want to keep um, as few a hands as possible so that everyone can feel comfortable in this experience, this journey together. Thank you. with love and light, knowing that we send this energy forward with wisdom, with joy, 
to do the work that is ours to do as a spiritual community to bring forth unlimited peace, love, and joy, and we are grateful. We are blessed and we bless the giver. Amen. Thank you, Mai. And we are a blessing. I am reminded that um, I skipped something earlier in the service. <laughs> And there was no intention in any way whatsoever to leave anyone outside the circle. And in fact, it's divinely perfect that I am waiting until now to do this. So if this is your first time walking across the threshold of the sanctuary at Unity of Salem, we invite you to raise your hand. We're going to do nothing drastic. We have a packet of information we would like to share with you. Good morning and thank you. Thank you, Dave. It's right in front of you there, yes. Um, and there's, I know there's one in the back row too. <laughs> Trish is, she's sitting there with Trish. But in this packet, there's information about Unity of Salem. There's information about Unity in general. There is a pink card that if you would like to fill it out, you could turn it into one of the greeters. You can turn it into me, to Trish. Um, we would like to send you a gift, but more than anything, we truly honor and welcome you here at Unity of Salem and are grateful that you have chosen to join us. Shall we welcome our, our newcomer? So we invite you now. We're going to stand and we're going to join together in our closing song. We are not going to um, hold hands. But what we invite you to do is put your hands over your heart. And let's connect together with that heart energy um, and truly know the truth of this song, which I can't even remember which one it God is. God is my source. Yeah, yes. Amen. God is my source, God is my power, God gives me everything I need, so I give thanks for all my blessings, God gives me all everything we need and we know this to be true and that we are each safe and secure as we affirm together our prayer for protection together the light of God surrounds us the love of God enfolds us the power of God protects us the presence of God watches over us wherever we are God is and all is well and we are truly blessed always. Namaste. Namaste.